Hello folks. So I wanted to make another video on the Sombrero Galaxy because um, what I did the first time um, a week or two ago when I made that video is I combined around um, about uh, 4 hours and 15 minutes of data captured from this year with about 2.8 hours of data captured with the same setup last year. But then, um, about a week or, or so later, I found two more hours of data from two years ago that I captured with my Nexstar A to C uh, SET telescope. And so I thought, well, why don't I throw that data into the mix and see if I get even a little more detail with the galaxy. And that's what I wanted to show you today. Now what surprised me the most was how bad the rotation was. It was absolutely different from this year, last year, and the year before. So check out what happened when I integrated all of the, the luminance data. <laughs> I've got three different rotations going on. Um, here, this way, and I'm not sure what's going on here. Probably that's the third way, but definitely three different ones. I have a very, very small field of view, even smaller than I thought it was going to be. It was like right down to this. I mean, I literally had to crop right down to the galaxy. Pretty much. <laughs> And then it still wasn't even in the center. Like, wow, this actually came out worse than I thought. Um, but that that's what I had to work with. <laughs> so, um, and <clears throat> so what I did is um, I only had um, luminance data from last year and the year before. And when I say luminance, I think last year was luminance um, with the CLS filter in front of it. And I can't even remember what I was doing two years ago, if it was just luminance, but it was probably the same thing, luminance with a CLS filter in front of it for that um, Nexstar A to C telescope. So that's what it looked like when I combined all of the loom data together for the for three years. And, and what I did, of course, is um, I calibrated each one separately with their own calibration frames and then once I had that calibrated data, then I integrated them as though they were one filter. And I show how to do that in another video um, with the horse head video. It's, um, it's pretty simple to combine data from um, different telescopes, even different cameras. So that's how that looked. And um, once I cropped everything down, <clears throat> this is how it, it looked. <laughs> There's my, my loom data the red, the green. Now the RGB data is only from this year. I didn't even have any previous RGB data from years past. And so um, later on I, I did crop it down so that the galaxy was in the center. Now I'm not going to go through um, the, the workflow. I already did that um, if you look a week or two ago with the Sombrero Galaxy. Uh, that video I go through the steps I followed. Um, for um, calibrating um, the histogram, combining. So you can look at that. I just wanted to show you um, the impact of adding the SCT data to my current um, Sombrero Galaxy. So this is the one I, I made a video on uh, a week or two ago, and I was pretty happy with it, but I thought, well, let's just see um, what it looks like if I add the SCT data to it now from two years ago. And um, one difference in the workflow that I, I that I did do is I skipped the color calibration. And the color calibration sort of took me from a, a goldish yellow galaxy to more of a, this a little bit more reddish galaxy here. So I kind of skipped that. I All of a sudden my taste changed back to that yellowish gold kind of look. I don't know. I, I flip-flop from one week to the next. So this is what it looks like. And a lot of people say, nah, they don't like this color, but that's okay. Everyone has their own taste. I'm okay if you don't like this one. But let's see. And one other thing is um, the, the one on the left is at a disadvantage because I was a little bit lazy. I didn't feel like waiting around, so I skipped the drizzling step. And that probably would have helped me even get even more detail. It's possible I could have added more detail 
as well as uh, making the galaxy um, bigger with higher resolution. It would have added more noise like drizzling normally does, but that's okay. So the one on the right is, is drizzled and the one on the left is not. But even without drizzling, I can tell the one on the left has a fraction, a little, a fraction more detail. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that in the video, but I can tell it, it, it's a little bit better. This one is very undefined, I thought, and this one has eh, just a fraction more. It's still undefined. I definitely could have benefited from capturing more data, or maybe I just could benefit if I knew how to bring out that detail more, but I don't. So, that's, I just wanted to show you, this is what happened when I add two hours of SET data. So what do you guys think? It was just a fun little exercise. It didn't take long to, get to, to add that data to it because I was lucky. Two years ago, I actually had all the calibrated data already. I didn't even have to, to restack anything or, or combine all the, the, the subs. It was already there. I was like, oh, okay, well, that was a gift. So, and plus now I want to also show you, um, for those of you who were um, following that live stream broadcast with the, the sunspot, I wanted to show you what I captured on that day. And then I, I also um, captured that same spot on the next day. And that day was where all the activity really was. I wish I had live streamed that day as well. I thought you, you might have found it even more interesting because, uh, but I, I just thought, well, I, I, I had fun doing it, but I thought you guys are going to think he's just doing that same spot again. He doesn't have to live stream that one, but it, 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 pro it actually turned out to be a better day. So um, maybe you would have found it interesting still if you had nothing else to do. So. Anyway, I'm talking too much, and uh, I will see you later. Thanks for tuning in, folks.